Moi, je suis très impatient aussi. J'ai dans le ventre l'impatience de 66 millions de Français. Je veux qu'on aille encore plus vite et plus fort. If Emmanuel Macron's rise to power in France was meteoric, his fall from grace since becoming president in May 2017 has been equally spectacular. A recent poll suggested that less than a third of French people had a positive view of their head of state. Rather than France's liberal savior, many are asking whether their 40-year-old president will turn out to be a normal political mortal who, boxed in by spending constraints and a mediocre economy, is quickly crushed by the burdens and compromises of office. He has faced many protests from railway workers, teachers and other public sector staff. Despite significant reforms to the labour market, secondary schools, hospitals and the state railways, voters do not see the promised revolution. After a stellar 2017, the economy has slowed down and unemployment has barely budged. Macron is now hoping that reforms and tax cuts for households and businesses will begin to have an impact. He has turned his attention to inequality with plans to make the pension system fairer. He admits much more needs to be done on poverty. Il y a le scandale de la pauvreté. C'est-à-dire de vies qui ne sont pas choisies, d'accidents qu'on a subis, de batailles qu'on a menées, parfois perdues. But tax cuts for the wealthy at the beginning of his term exposed him to claims that he is a president for the rich. A bad image in France, which may prove hard to correct even if his reforms eventually produce more jobs and higher living standards. Meanwhile, his strenuous efforts to cast himself as a man with the authority of Jupiter, king of the Roman gods, have at times made him appear arrogant and out of touch. Je m'appelle Monsieur le Président de la République ou Monsieur D'accord Voilà. He spent half a million euros to buy new china for the Elysee Palace, referred to opponents of his reforms as slackers, decried the crazy amount of dough spent on welfare, and told a young job seeker he only had to cross the road to find work. His vow to run a presidency of the highest ethical standards rang hollow when Alexandre Benalla, one of his security aides, was filmed pretending to be a police officer and beating up a protester at a Paris demonstration. The ensuing Ferrari made for a difficult summer. But it didn't end there. The autumn got off to a dreadful start when one of the stars of his government resigned as environment minister on a live radio show. Nicolas Hulot, a well-known campaigner, quit the government claiming it was not taking green issues seriously. Je ne veux plus me mentir. Je veux pas donner l'illusion que ma présence au gouvernement signifie qu'on est à la hauteur sur ces enjeux-là. Et donc je prends la décision de quitter le gouvernement. The episode suggested Macron was struggling to use the forces of civil society to overcome the rigid French system, supposedly central to his political strategy. He suffered a more damaging blow to his authority in early October, when a former close ally, Gérard Colomb, resigned as interior minister defying the president's pleas for him to stay. Colomb had recently made a stark warning to Macron, saying, it's the curse of the gods when at some point you become too sure of yourself. The president spent weeks searching for a replacement, a delay which made him appear isolated and with few options. Macron still has formidable strengths. The mainstream opposition parties are in disarray. Marine Le Pen, the far-right leader, has not yet recovered from her bruising defeat. Macron has a huge majority in Parliament, which is more or less solidly behind him. Business confidence remains high. In Europe, he is still seen as the liberal standard bearer against a nationalist right. But he will have to be more audacious to bring about profound change and show he is really different from his predecessors.